back with the dolls. And of course, we always start with a little bit of Poke Doku, okay? Happy birthday, Hannah. Happy birthday, Polly. Hey, you freaking robot, get back in the kitchen and bring me a hot open face meatloaf, meatloaf sandwich. Forget about it. What is Johto again? Johto is gold silver. Is that correct? Gold silver. Okay. We're, we will not be getting nine out of nine, by the way. Because, like... We're just not, but like there's a few of these I can get. Poison Ground comes up all the time, and I always forget who it is. People are really saying eight, nine out of ten on this, or eight, nine out of nine on this one. This is insane. Like the grass is easy enough. Okay, first in evolutionary line, maybe you've heard of a little Bulbasaur. Yes, I'm sure. Last in evolutionary line, check this out. Maybe you've heard of a little Roserade. Obviously, we could have gone Venusaur. Poison Ground is Nido Queen. That one, I'm going to lock it into the Cerebellum. Poison, first in the evolutionary line, Gliscor. No, Gligar. Gligar. Chat, riddle me this. It's a scorpion. It's a purple scorpion. How is it not poison? It's flying ground. How can something be flying ground? It has a stinger. Poison. First in evolutionary line. Maybe you've heard of him. His name is Coughing. Poison final evolution. Perhaps you've heard of him. His name is Wheezing Galar. Bro looks like Winston Churchill. Ground and grass. This is a gimme. It is Torterra. Holy cow, it worked. I always remember Ludwig saying, ground is not necessarily things that are on the ground. It's things that shake the ground when they walk. Or in the case of Gligar, something that doesn't touch the ground at all because that bro has wings. So just remember, like, it, just because it works some of the time doesn't mean it works 100% of the time. Now, Johto, ground, gold and silver, the cover is like Ho-Oh and L Lugia. The final evolution, I'm pretty sure that Chikorita was in the second game. Or P Piplup. Chikorita, Piplup. Torchic. Torchic, any chance Torchic was the second generation? Torchic. Torchic, of course, evolves into Tor. Pyro. Pyroar. Flarflea. Let's try this then. How about Chikorita? Fantastic. And then maybe the second gen was mm, not Piplup, but Mudkip. In which case, Swampert is the final evolution. Okay, well, I can live with that, honestly. It's to they did Toto Deal second? That's crazy, because Toto Deal is washed. Nobody cares about Toto Deal. Everybody cares about Swampert, bro. Wrong. Actually, I'm right. Swampert is one of the highest uh, DPS water type Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Nobody gives a shit about Feraligator. Straight up. Nobody cares. I'm sorry. He's actually right. Much like the heuristic about ground Pokemon, I am right occasionally. No, he was cute when I was nine. Okay, we're talking about like their resume, okay? What have they done for me lately? A packed auditorium. POV, you are uh, the biggest theater in Los Angeles on opening night for the Marbles. <laughs> 
Oh, man. This is the Fablemans. No, it's too Kino to be in the game. It's Maestro. This is uh, uh, the Majestic. It's a pretty big theater for the Majestic. This is uh, Tenet. This is the opera scene from Tenet. Don't criticize. Okay, this is um, maybe like See How They Run. No? Okay, maybe Birdman, The Unbearable Lightness of Being. Okay, we're obviously not even in the right era. I have no clue. I, is this seriously not Maestro? Am I losing my mind? Is this not Bradley Cooper in, in makeup? Oh, it's a Stephen Jobs movie. This is Steve Jobs. You got it. <laughs> he got it. There are two. The other one is called Jobs. It's crazy how many jobs we had in 2014. Jobs gone. True. Michael... I was going to say Michael Jordan. Michael Jackson on... Well, Michael Jackson... This joke doesn't work because Michael Jackson died before Steve Jobs. What I was going to say is POV, you are Michael Jackson on October 29th, 2011. Jobs gone. Jobs gone. You know what I'm talking about. The one good Kate Winslet performance? Can you shut your mouth, please? Uh... Kate Winslet, first off, unassailably great performances throughout her career. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is Clementine Krasinski. That's a given. She kills it in Titanic. Uh, she got nominated for an Oscar for The Reader. Uh, that, that Mayor of Easttown, she got nominated for 3,500 Emmys for Mayor of Easttown. She's great in Contagion. Like, what have you ever done except criticize? I got zero of nine today. This NFC team was 11 and two when their Pro Bowl starting QB got injured during the 1990 season. Got led to a Super Bowl victory by backup Jeff Hostetler. Easy. San Francisco 49ers. Steve Young got diverticulitis and Jeff Hostetler came in. New York Giants. Okay, I didn't know that one. After seven seasons in Portland, Nicholas Batum got traded to this Eastern Conference team in 2015 where he'd receive a big $120 million extension in 2016. It's the New York Knicks, bro. Okay, good start. This American golfer had a dominant 2015, where he won the Masters, the U.S. Open, the FedEx Cup, and finished second at the PGA Championship. Who is John Ram? All right, good start. Good start. Actually, Tiger Woods makes a lot of sense. Rory McIlroy? Bro, Rory, Rory McIlroy, look at his name. It's the most Scottish man that has ever existed on planet Earth. His name is Rory McIlroy. You said Ram, he's Spanish? Yeah, but he sounds American. Rory McIlroy sounds Scottish. We, we're both wrong, but I'm writer. He's Irish. Okay, he's Irish, but he sounds Scottish to me. With a unibody frame. There's the Honda Ridgeline. Okay, there's one. We're not completely washed. This is Seth Rogen and Viggo Mortensen. That's not even a contest. Coming in chocolate, cherry, and butterscotch. The Dilly Bar is an ice cream. Associated with what chain? Imagine saying a word wrong. That's Dairy Queen. I'm just going to say it. You got to be about 98 fucking years old to get a dilly bar at Dairy Queen. I'm sorry that the ice cream world has passed you by. You can get whatever you want. But um, you should be getting at least a, a blizzard at this point in your life. In fact, you might only get a blizzard. Otherwise, I would say you're probably going to Dairy Queen too often. I like Dairy Queen. I go maybe one to two times a year and I get a blizzard every time. Because why wouldn't you get a blizzard? 
chicken basket pretty sick? It is. The only thing, like the chicken strip basket is incredible. Never look up the health information. The chicken strip basket, especially if you get gravy with it, is actually like 1,900 calories or something. Like it's a daily recommended amount of energy for an adult to consume. Duh. No, you don't understand. Like, like almost all fast food is like really bad for you. But like a McDouble is 400 calories. The chicken strip basket from Dairy Queen is like, it might not be 1900. It might be like 1300 calories, but still. It's 1300 calories, six strips. I, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's a lot. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, okay? I'm not saying the sodium is high. Whenever I see the sodium is high in something, I'm like, don't worry about it. I'll just drink more water. Emma Roberts, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Abigail Breslin, star of Little Miss Sunshine, starred in this satirical slasher comedy that aired on Fox for two years. I have absolutely no idea. Um, Friday the 14th. Let's call it... Um, Hooked, illegal drugs, and how they got that way. Scream Queens. Okay, Scream Queens. Following the death of his grandfather, 12-year-old Billy Haywood becomes the owner and later manager of the Minnesota Twins in this 1994 sports comedy film, What is Angels in the Outfield? There we go. This is uh, irritating. Well, first off, that's not right. Wait, what is it then? Apollo said Field of Dreams. <laughs> it's Little Big League. I don't even remember that one. Okay, listen, I guess it's the theme of today is like, I'm wrong, but you're more wrong. Uh, Field of Dreams is an insane pick. What does he think Field of Dreams is about, bro? It's like a, a understated drama about a man coming to terms with the death of his father. I guess it's not that dissimilar. Oh, this is the who. You didn't know, you got zero today? You didn't know that uh, Pete Townsend and Keith Moon are in the who? I mean, that's just, I, I get everybody's got different domains of knowledge, but come on. That's a tough one today. Average score, 4.1. I mean, considering there was no chance we got any of the sports questions today. I can live with it. The Hoomst? Steve Harvey voice? Meat in what? Remember when Michael Jackson and Billy Mays died like in the same week? What are you trying to do? Why are you trying to pit two bad bitches against each other? You're trying to bait me into saying some fucked up shit about Billy Mays? I got nothing against Billy Mays whatsoever. But what do you mean Michael Jackson and Billy Mays died in the same week? I remember where I was when I heard Michael Jackson died. Keep in mind, I'm, I'm in basically, not rural Ontario at this point. I'm in Kingston, Ontario in an, in an office with like nine other people where the radio is on uh, all day. It's a rock radio station. It must have been 2008 or 2009. They made uh, an announcement. On, they like interrupted a song and made an announcement on the radio that Michael Jackson died. I just remember my boss going, <gasps> like she was like, she ran over to the radio and turned it up. It was like the JFK assassination. It was a momentous cultural moment. Did she turn her oxygen up? She was like, I don't know, she was probably 28. <laughs> Choir floor is to glee, tar, tar pit, snake pit, fire pit, band pit. Uh, that's bullshit. Those are real things. Officiant caterer. What are uh, roles in a wedding? Band. 
Orchest orchestra pit, fire pit, snake pit, barbecue pit. What the? There's like a thousand different pits, bro. Festivity, mirth, cheer, and glee. Synonyms for enjoying yourself. Merriment. Snake pit. Orchestra pit. Tar pit. Fire pit. <laughs> Liar, choir, fryer, fire. Words that rhyme. Tar, barbecue, snake, orchestra. What is a snake pit? Bro, it's a pit with your... I'm literally right. Snake pit. It's right there. It's a pit with snakes in it. It's a thing. It was orchestra pit? Bro, I literally go to the ballet. I go to the opera. I go to the symphony. I'm cultured. What'd you think it was going to be, Brad? So you stick the joke, and then because we're going to put this on TikTok later, you give like 10 seconds of silence at the end. And you try not to swear, because the TikTok algorithm just fucking crushes the stuff when you swear. It, it gets like eight views. So you got you to gotta constantly be thinking about that content flywheel, okay? And then when you clip this, because I'm going to take your clip, don't clip it with the swear word in it, because then I got to download the whole thing and open it in Adobe Premiere Rush and then cut it and then re-render it and then upload it to Twitch and then use the exporter to send it to TikTok, okay? Where's my cut if I do that? Wait, where the fuck is my cut on TikTok, bro? I still got nothing. I haven't even earned enough to get a one cent Amazon gift card. But every time I, I sign into TikTok, it's like good news. You have uh, earned the right to go live on TikTok. And then it says like, here's what your income could be. And it's like, if you have 100,000 subscribers, you'll make like $150,000 a month. And I'm like, 150,000 paying subscribers? I only have... 46,000 free followers, man. Like, I think you're, you're juicing the numbers a little bit. That seems like it's probably like a hundred times more than I could realistically expect. Oh, man. Start selling affiliated products on your live. TikTok is so funny, or maybe me being on TikTok is so funny because like, they also do give you like those offers and it's like, hey, you should make a video about X topic. It's going viral right now. And it, like yesterday it was like, you should make a video about top hoodie brands. And I was like, yeah, you got me figured out. Whatever metadata you got on the back end, it's, it's working really well. Don't even question it. Hey, paper mache Mephistopheles, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. My bad. Oops. Oops. Driver around Hollywood. Adam. Complete and utter. Fully? Make up. Make mad with up. Rile. Brand of cups. Solo. So close. Now this should be odors. Complete and utter. Complete and utter. Let's see. Place for an outdoor grill. Patio. The stuff you shouldn't sweat. Small stuff. Killers of the Flower Moonstar Leo. Oats. It, it was oaf milk, huh? It was oaf milk for a while. Admit it. When driver around Hollywood, when I got Adam in one second, you were like, fuck, this dude's kind of smart. As I, at first, I could feel my brain. My brain was going like, chauffeur, Uber. Nah, man. Adam Drive. You gotta, you gotta take the whole clue in. You gotta encapsulate the whole clue. Holy cow, is a product from Costco my wife actually buys uh, every time we're there. And yet I have no much, I have no idea how much it costs. Sion Bakery Honey Castella. 
12 honey Castellas. I'm going to say this in Canada, this would be $19.99. For America, I'm going to take it down to $17.99. Uh, wow. I get that it's just like flour, but still, that's pretty freaking cheap, bro. $12.99? Good Lord. I've never seen that at Costco. It's one of those products, like, you get addicted to it. You go to Costco and it's there and you're like, wow, that's so good. And then like the next time you go to Costco, it's not there anymore. I don't know if it's seasonal or like they only pick it up uh, like when the supply cost or the cost itself is actually low to Costco or something. You get addicted to the product and then they yank it away. What is it? It's like a little pastry. It's I, it, like a kind of like a, a long muffin. I would describe it like a long muffin. Hey, Anel, I saw a dude chewing Zin at the gym. Any thoughts? I got to tell you, uh, the, you, you always continue to get more out of touch. Um, so I thought maybe vaping was the natural like endpoint of nicotine delivery. I don't even know what Zin is. I just know uh, that it's nicotine. And it comes in a pouch. Is that correct? They're little snooze pouches. It's, it's vaping for dip. What does that mean? It's contained dip. It's contained dip. So it's like a, a, like a Tide Pod nicotine supplement. Kind of. Spitless dip. I don't really understand dip either. Why do you spit when you dip? Because it's nasty? Well, then why do you eat it in the first place? <laughs> You can understand my confusion, right? For the buzz? I don't, I don't know if I... I'm, I'm trying to figure out what's the difference. So what's the, what, what is a Zin pouch then? You put it into your mouth. What happens after that? You suck or chew on the pouch. And then like nicotine juice comes out, but you don't have to spit it out. It gets absorbed sublingually. It's kind of like a tea bag. Is that you? You spot you slot it up in your lip, and it gets absorbed into your gums. Librarian, I don't know how you're going to make content out of that, but thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. I'm just trying to understand, okay? So is it like I'm? I'm trying to meet. Gen Z on their level, okay? You are trying to quit smoking, so you start zinning instead, which gives you the nicotine buzz, but it isn't as toxic. You kind of got it? Okay. My, my thoughts on this have... have always been, I think, fair, in my opinion, and uh, reasonable. If you already are addicted to nicotine and you take a toxic form of it, then it's good for you to go to a less harmful way to get your fix if you're not going to quit it entirely. If you are not addicted to nicotine and you start doing nicotine supplementation, I feel like you've lost the plot. You've lost your mind. Like, that's crazy. I'm sure hundreds of thousands of people fall into that camp, but that is, that's kind of insane. Chew, I know chew is bad for you, but isn't it because there's also like other poison stuff in the chew? If the Zin is like just the nicotine and I don't know, probably like mint flavoring or something, that might not be so bad. 
I don't know. I'm not a scientist. I don't work at Philip Morris or the health department. Algeria. Oh, oh, really? Togo? Please be in Europe. Please be in Europe. I think it's in Europe. Andorra? 560 kilometers away from Andorra. Corsica? Oh, it's a territory, not a country. Sorry, any Corsicans watching this. Um, Switzerland? Hey, that was a good guess. We took some good guesses today. And they say nicotine's bad for you. I have never, well, I wouldn't say I've never consumed nicotine. But I've never enjoyed it. <laughs> I really, like, I, I'll give you my, my history with smoking, okay? I think, I've, Josh, sometimes in the past, you know, like 10 years ago, if he was really drunk, he would smoke like two cigarettes. And then one time I was like, hey, let me try that. And uh, I was like, I do not get this at all, honestly. But then there was like a three week period in university where me and my boys smoked like a cigar once a week. And the first time I was like, wow, this sucks, but I bet the next time is going to be awesome. And then the next time sucked. And I was like, okay, I'm going to give you like one more chance. And then we all got cigars for the third time. And we were all like, bro, this fucking sucks, dude. This shit is actually stupid. It's never good. Cigars are like expensive. They make you smell like shit and have a headache and not be able to breathe. They taste like garbage and you don't even get high. Like it, maybe I shouldn't be saying this as a brand ambassador, but if you're going to smoke something bad for you, you might as well be having fun, right? You might not just smoke in like just to smoke. That's crazy. I don't understand cigars at all. I don't think they make you look cool, honestly. Like I, I think when I was like 18, I was like, oh, that makes you look cool. But when I turned like 19, I was like, you do not look cool with, this, with a cigar. You have to be middle-aged. I don't know. When it, during COVID, uh, I would always take a walk. And then in this park near our old place, every Saturday, like four old dudes would pull out lawn chairs and smoke cigars in a circle with each other. And I was like, I don't know anything about them. But if they thought that they were looking cool, they, that impression was lost on me. Let me just put it that way. I was not like, whoa, there's some real gangsters in the park. I was like, let me guess, your wife doesn't let you smoke inside. Like, wow, really? You got your lawn chair out in a public place, just sitting down, like smoking a cigar with one ashtray on the sidewalk in between all four of you? Like, it's just fucking, it's just kind of fucking weird to me, to be honest with you. What on earth is this ad, bro? You ever get, so I usually get these intermittent fasting ads, um, but it's almost always like just a dude with his belly hanging out on each one. I don't know what I did to get the gay married Navy captains. <laughs> I'm happy for him or whatever. I'm just kind of confused about what, what it is in my cookies that, that got this done, man. This is so funny. This is, uh, uh, World always has the best ads. This is also where we got the t-shirt ad that was like, um, don't mess with me, or don't mess with old people. Life in prison means less to them. Oh, man. It's so funny, man. It's like the stages of their life. It's like, look... They're like best friends and they're like, yeah, let's go out and let's go out and have a night on the town. And then they're like, we don't get to party that much, but here we are having fun. And then finally, 
like, I don't know why they're older at 55 to 65 than at 65 plus. But anyway, the, finally, they realize that they're in love. And they can spend their life together. And then they go back to partying again. And then they, I don't know, whatever. This is like Denmark minus the other peninsula. I'm just going to say this is Estonia. It looks like it, it has a sea on its northern border. Interesting. 7,000 kilometers southwest of Estonia. Is this a North African country? Or is that too far? 7,000 kilometers is pretty far, bro. Tunisia. It's even further than Tunisia. Okay, I'm in trouble. I do not think that's a northern border. Any longer. Well, it, it sort of... Maybe it's a western border? Maybe this is like a... Uh, a Côte d'Ivoire? Yo! One second. I don't know if my mute button works. How does uh, illness work? When your mucus is clear, that means you're earlier in the illness. When your mucus is like the color of Mountain Dew, that means your body has killed the bacteria and is discharging it, right? Sometimes, I'm going to take that as a data point. Yellow's bad, I think. What about like Gatorade? This is basically the color of Gatorade. It's almost like bioluminescent. Brown is bad. It's not brown. It's like it's the most yellow mucus I've ever seen in my life. Yellow is the color of honey, which means it's good. Okay, I'll take that. Me explaining to my body that if it stops growing back hair for two weeks, it can use the, that energy to grow more white blood cells to fight the infection off faster. Oh, I get it now. Twenty sixteen January fifteenth, twenty sixteen. Universal Pictures opened to thirty five million dollars starring Kevin Hart. Get hard. That probably has Will Farrell as first billing. Tagline The brothers in law are back. I Entirely have no idea. Is this Ride Along 2? They did make a second one, apparently. Okay, it is Ride Along 2. As his wedding day approaches, Ben heads to Miami with his soon-to-be brother-in-law, James, to bring down a drug dealer who's supplying the dealers of Atlanta with product. Olivia Munn. This sounds good. Anybody seen Ride Along 2? It looks really good. You can tell they really put a, it's like a labor of love based on how uh, nice the poster is. Really inspiring poster. You can tell this was made from like a place of artistic merit, <laughs> not just commercial obligation. 20th Century Fox is it's doing really well. Only minus 20% in its fourth week is pretty good, starring Leonardo DiCaprio from 2016. The Revenant. We win these. Walt Disney, fifth week, $852 million. 
action adventure science fiction. So it is a Marvel movie in its fifth week. Pre-Infinity War, post Age of Ultron, Civil War was like Memorial Day weekend. What would be after that? Action adventure science fiction. It's too early for Guardians 2. Guardians came out like July or maybe May 2014. Could be a... It's too early for like Thor Ragnarok, I think. Let me get an actor. Oh, it's a Star Wars. That explains it. Fifth week, 2016. This must be The Force Awakens. Okay. How washed is like Star Wars? Like maybe it's... I'm willing to accept I should have thought of Star Wars faster. But... uh Marvel is washed, and even with Marvel being washed, I didn't even think about Star Wars. It lost a ride-along too. Librarian, that's not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, okay? It made $852 million. Star Wars was not washed when The Force Awakens came out. This ended up being like the fifth highest grossing movie of all time or something like that. But in 2024, it's washed, Okay. It's in its fifth week in the multiplex. Everybody's seen it by this point. Paramount Pictures starring John Krasinski. From 2016, when everything went wrong, six men had the courage to do what was right. This better not be a movie about, like, basketball. I have no idea what this is. An American ambassador is killed at a U.S. compound in Libya as a security team struggles to make sense out of the chaos. What is Libya? What is Benghazi? I have no idea what this is. 13 hours. I've never heard of it in my life, to be honest with you. You had it? What do you mean I had it? <laughs> it was right there? Oh, I guess the subtitle, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. It's, listen. It would have been resin to click on that. I didn't know it cold, okay? Maybe for you, you're used to taking your 10th grade chemistry exam, and you, do, you just fill out ACDC on the Scantron, and you're like, holy cow, I got 58%. Me, when I was in school, if I don't know the answer, I consider it academically dishonest to even guess. I say, all I write on that one is I say, you got me, teacher. I'll try harder next time. I don't want any ill-gotten gains. Paramount Pictures, $130 million starring Will Ferrell. 2016. And it's not Get Hard. It's Daddy's Home 2. It's Choose Your Daddy. It's Daddy's Home. I deserve that one. <laughs> I really thought... I, I have a false memory then of watching Daddy's Home on a flight in 2013. Which obviously doesn't make sense because the movie came out in 2016. Apparently, Daddy's Home 2 came out in 2017. It came out a year later? It premiered on that flight? That's true. Most Hollywood distributors don't have the courage to premiere a, a flight or a premiere a movie on a 10% booked flight, Cathay Pacific from New York City to Vancouver, January 2013, but. Warner Brothers, I mean Paramount Pictures, they've been doing that for years. That's where I saw Top Gun Maverick in 1997. 44th percentile on box office games. Kind of hurts. Kind of hurts. That's what the director wanted. That is how I felt when I watched uh, Barbarian which I enjoyed uh, mightily, by the way. But I was like, I'm pretty sure the director didn't intend for the average person to watch this on the Peloton screen 
picture in picture with all their bike data alongside it, starting at 6.40 in the morning. But I was still invested. Like that might have taken some other cinema files out of the experience, but I guess I'm just built different. Do not trust her. Pregnant. F. Religious allegory. This is a rude one, brother. Okay. Iran filmmakers Ben Affleck Argo. Where's my Benjamins? This is Argo. Jennifer Lawrence, religious allegory, uninvited guests. Pregnant, I think. This is mother. Denzel Washington, trainee day. Trainee day? Police officer. This must be Mean Girls. Oh my God, we are F pregnant police officer. What the hell? So this is Mean Girls. Mother. It's giving mother. It's taking a shit in the mother toilet. Training day. Argo. F pregnant police officer. Filmmakers. Iran. Argo. Fargo! Oh. <laughs> Literally, in my head, I was like, I'm going to try the other two because there's no shot. It's going to be Argo. Like, Argo should only be able to connect with Argo. Fargo. It makes perfect sense. I like a puzzle that makes you go, oh, at the end. What about your academic integrity? That only applies to box office game, bro. In Cine to Nerdle, I'll throw anything at the wall. Every situation's got its own unique strategies, right? Like Steph Curry's not shooting for three-pointers from the free throw line. He's just got to sink it for one. Righteous Kill. Shaun of the Dead. The World's End. Okay. Movies with... That guy who I can picture. Simon Pegg. There we go. Thank you, Brain. Movies with Benjamin Stiller, Starsky and Hutch, The Royal Tenenbaums, Meet the Parents, The Godfather Part Two, Zoolander, Superbad. Movies with Seth Rogen, Knocked Up. Hang on, we got this. Now, what is the other one? Heat Irishman, Righteous Kill. These are either De Niro or Pacino. So it should be like this, and then that. Simon Pegg, Seth Rogen, De Niro and Pacino, okay. And then Ben Stiller, and Owen Wilson. Wait, are these pairs? This is Frost and Pegg. Rogen and Franco. Pacino and De Niro, Stiller and Wilson, okay. And then... That's when things get a little tricky. Cops. Movies where they play cops. Starsky and Hutch. Heat. Hot Fuzz. Oh, they're not both cops in Heat, obviously. Robert De Niro is Macaulay. He's the greatest robber of all time. Must be Righteous Kill. There we go. Seth Rogen and Bill Hader. Okay. That was not so bad. It's a cute one. I agree. I just watched Heat. It's still so fire. It's, it's one of the greatest movies of all time. I said, awfully hot. Michael Mann spot. Should I watch it on TikTok? Probably not. Okay. Two of the best films from my childhood. Casino Royale to Green Lantern. Just crunching the numbers on this. I'm just crunching the numbers on this. My 
thinking is that I'm going to get lost in the Ryan verse because it's like Daniel Craig, Knives Out, Chris Evans. The gray man. Now I'm on the wrong Ryan, bro. Now I'm on the wrong Ryan. Ryan Gosling. No, don't do it. That's not the right way. This is not the right way. Why am I scrolling? What do, what do you think you're going to find down here? It's a Netflix movie, bro. They spend all the money on the first three or four actors. Like, let's not go ridiculous. It's not like there's going to be like a, a Tom Noonan cameo halfway through the movie that redeems the whole thing. It, it, it exists to insist merely upon itself, okay? Ryan Gosling. Gucci Valagiria. This is so easy. Blade Runner 2049, Dave Batista. I refuse to believe Dave Batista is not in a movie with Ryan Reynolds. Like probably before, <laughs> before he really started popping off maybe, but like somewhere, okay, we're getting way back into the WWE stuff. Dave Batista is just in Spectre, bro. We could have, well, that would require me to have seen Spectre. So that's a problem. Hotel Artemis. I'm moving backwards. I'm moving backwards. Ryan Reynolds. Film wait, 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 what about Peter Sarsgaard, bro? Peter Sarsgaard, you know, from Garden State. And the Salton Sea. He's been in stuff. Blake Lively. She's been in a movie with Harrison Ford. Who is it? Dave, but hold on, we're going backwards. Dave Batista uh, to Hotel Artemis again. No, no, wait, this doesn't make sense. To Blade Runner 2049, to Harrison Ford, to the age of Adeline to Blake Lively to the Green Green Lantern 2011. Okay, I didn't see myself connecting via Blake Lively, but we got there. The long way. Daniel Craig, Flashbacks of a Fool, Mark Strong. Nobody knows about this film, except for Freddie Babe. 242 is not too bad. Blake Lively is literally his wife? No, bro. Blake Lively is literally the Green Lantern love interest. She's an actress in her own right. She just also happens to be married to the star. You've defined her via the man that she's in a relationship with. I've defined her by, via her work, you know? Is that how they met? I don't know. It's none of my business. What did you want me to do? Go Blake Lively, uh, their shared home? Like, you got to find a movie that they're in together. I can't, there's no write-in ballad here where I can say they're married and then they go, oh, like, well, yeah, you got it. You're just, honestly, you got unlucky to get cooked there because someone in chat typed, did you know Harrison Ford is in the Age of Adeline? And yes, I did. That's how I got to the movie in the first place via Blade Runner 2049. I clicked on Harrison Ford, then I clicked on The Age of Adeline, then I clicked on Blake Lively, and then I clicked on The Green Lantern. I'm starting to see why you guys like Nomadland so much. Oh, God, Chloe Zhao can handle herself. She doesn't need shooters in the chat, okay? She did a Marvel movie. She'll be fine. I can't tell if this looks like Silent Hill or if it just feels like Silent Hill because of all the fucking cataract simulations coming on the side of the screen right here. Like, this shit looks like Silent Hill. 
four. Metacritic score, 84%. Is not in the Silent Hill universe. Someone is shooting a gun. Gears of War, four. Nope. Originally on the PlayStation 3. Kill Zone 2. It is in the franchise. Genre, first person shooter. Kill Zone 3. Kill Zone. Kill Zone 3. The answer is Kill Zone 3. Whoa! <laughs> Me when I see the Suicide Squad take a piss on the Flash. No! I will never pirate this game. I was so excited to pirate this game, but now I'm not going to pirate it. They're, they're desecrating my childhood. I will not be playing it because it looks bad, okay? It's got nothing to do with the fact that they fucking killed Batman in the opening scene or whatever. It looks like a waste of time. We are not the same. Do not think that I am your ally. Spoilers? The game is called Kill the Justice League, bro! Squeaks is streaming, is streaming it today. I watched him stream a little bit of it uh, yesterday. How do you think I knew so much about it? And? And? <laughs> and he was streaming it. It's just, and no further comments are, are necessary. Smart of you to not type in chat. Excuse me, VIP Daniel, I saw you typing up a storm. I was a little offended that you didn't type back to me. I was typing bat chest. I was only there for like two minutes or something. I typed bat chest a couple times. When the Flash showed up, I said, The Flash, bat chest! But then Squeaks' chat is crazy because it's like 99% uh, emotes that I don't have. So it just looks like indecipherable text flying by at like 10,000 meters per second. Like, I feel like such a boomer. I go in there with like my better Twitch TV emote. And I'm like, you know, Keck W. People are like, who's dropping Keck W? I'm, drop I'm dropping Sag Laugh. Sag laugh is the way that you laugh in this chat. And I'm like, oh, I'll just leave. The Zodiac Killer. This is Nancy Drew. Probably the Curse of Blackmore Manor. It is a Nancy Drew game. Okay. That narrows it down. Probably Secrets of the Old Clock, if I had to guess. Nancy Drew. Maybe warnings at Waverly Academy? <laughs> okay, here we go. Now, now we're cooking. Now we got something. Nancy Drew. Secrets can kill. This looks like secrets can kill. Yeah! Egg knows context clues, kind of. How did you know? Well, it's simple. It, they had a book about the Zodiac Killer. It had to be Nancy Drew. It's the only game with the courage to put like a, a real murder in it. If it was a, a game that was made by a public corporation that was uh, concerned with shareholder value, it would have been called like, you know, the, the, the big murderer, the big murderer. They got no courage. They rounded off all the edges. The mean guy. <laughs> the Dark Pictures Anthology, The Devil Inside of Me. We kind of need another, another Dark Pictures game, man. They're supposed to come out like once every three weeks. It's been like a year and a half since the last one. Cyber Monday? Wasn't that shit like four months ago? Would, would, your ad is cooked. Bahia Principe, Hotels and Resorts. The Dark Pictures Anthology, Little Hope. It is third person. It is more distant than 2020. Probably Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. 
No. Oh, right. That's a first person game. It's older than that, but it's not a shooter. That's a valuable piece of intel. It is Murder Red Soul Suspect, 2014. Oh, baby. It's a solo puzzle RPG adventure. Also known as a little game from Capcom called Remember Me. Oh, that's 2013, you piece. Don't nod, made Remember Me. I didn't know about I played it and I didn't know about that. Talk about, I mean, Remember Me had some cool stuff, but talk about a glow up going from Remember Me to fucking like season one of Life is Strange. I love that for them. It's probably going to be like an action, action horror game, like the evil within one. I, I thought for certain that would be it. Oh, but it's earlier than 2013. Why am I stuck on 2014 here like a fool? We can at least make some reasonable guesses. It's puzzle role-playing adventure game from earlier than 2014 that might have some horror elements but is not a shooter. Okay, okay. Resident Evil 4. Uh, original please. The original. A junior bacon cheese. It's more... Re oh, that's a shooter. <laughs> that is a shooter. You're not wrong. But it is more recent than 2005. Silent Hill, also kind of a shooter. It is... Uh, Amnesia is not in the third person. It is a uh, 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 quantum break. That's 2016, my good friend. Is not from the same developer, so it won't be Alan Wake. Okay. It is murder. No, no, you did that one. You already did that one. It is uh, a David Cage game by the name of Heavy Rain. No, because it would be PlayStation exclusive. It never came out on PC. But it, I mean, it can't be Detroit either. But it could be Fahrenheit, also known as Indigo Prophecy. Doesn't exist. You're not allowed to talk about that game on Twitch. Well, fuck you, man. I don't know what it is. I didn't really think I'd, I took a stab at this one. Heavy rain. I'm, I'm sending it. They hate me? It's earlier than 2010. Puzzle? Role-playing adventure? Am I stupid and this is like uh, Twilight Princess? <laughs> and I, for some reason, I just tunnel visioned on it being a horror game? Okay, obviously the platform's not right. Oh, I can't even use a hint. I was like, I'll use a hint on the last one, but it takes one so they don't let you. Okay, 2006. Puzzle role-playing adventure that came out on the PC, presumably. What was that one that came out before Amnesia? It's called like it's called it's called it's called it's called pen up the guns that's first person anyway now that I think about it uh it feels like this one would be gettable with just just a little bit more time and a few less wasted guesses came out on the PC huh Purple Palace. No, no, I would never have gotten it. There's a 0% chance I would have. I was naive to think that I would have ever gotten this. My mistake. Hey, NL, 500 slabs of Titanite or dinner with the furtive pygmy? You can do whatever you want. I would take uh, dinner with the furtive pygmy because you would get more than 500 Titanite slabs worth of wisdom out of that. Plus the way Dark Souls work... Uh, works. You can actually beat the game with the broken, shattered short sword that you start with. Um, 
so you, uh, titanite slabs, you might need that to level up your like lightning spear or whatever you got from the basement of Sen's Fortress. But me, I'm just built different. I like the hustle, okay? I might consider using Rickard's Rapier, but you would not catch me using like a Black Knight Halberd or something like that. That's honestly, I'm just built different. Great question though, great question. One word movie from 2001. It's a comedy. This is called Life. Oh, good. Probably that one. This is Gene Hackman at his most wildly unhinged. A scene-stealing turn that chews just enough scenery to ignite laughing fits whenever he's around. You see Gene Hackman on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives? where he uh, is just in like a gas station restaurant and Guy Fieri's like, why do you like it here? And he's like, I've been coming here for years. It's got great food and nobody bothers you. A concoction by David Merkin that never fails to sink to the lowest common denominator yet often hits a funny bone. Sigourney Wiener. <laughs> it was by accident, I promise. Sigourney Weaver and Jennifer Love Hewitt. This is Heartbreakers. This is Heartbreakers. Ray Liotta, Gene Hackman, Sigourney Weaver, Jennifer Love Hewitt. This is a, a TBS classic right here. Great movie. It's okay. It's got its moments. Sigourney Weaver sings the entirety of Back in the USSR in a Russian accent. Sigourney Weiner is really funny. I think that my um, language processing area of my brain has permanently been altered by streaming on Twitch for so long. Like I've been word wronging like at least, I would say like five times an hour. I don't think it's ever coming back, honestly. Oh, don't worry. Spell check is coming, okay? Spell check is on its way. Today, I'd like to get from Qatar to India. One second, I'm just making sure the ads are PG-13. In semblance. Um, you're going you're gonna to travel through Iran at some point. Am I insane to think that China is a better connection than Pakistan here? Oh! Pakistan? Yep. Yeah, I was insane. Pakistan. For some reason in my head, I thought Pakistan... Like, remember, this is before we had China on the map for comparison. I thought that Pakistan would be, like, this big. I thought it would be, like, Portugal to India's Spain. But it's more like, I don't know, like, I can't think of a good example, like Denmark to India's Germany. I don't know. 200 million people live there. Yeah, you fucking idiot. I'm obviously talking about the geographic size of the country. Why are you trying to twist my words into something? Yeah, I'm smart enough to know what you were talking about, but some fucking moron watching might get offended. It's you, idiot. You're the idiot. That's getting offended. Yeah, but if someone didn't know what you were talking about, they could take it the wrong way. Let me worry about that point, Dexter. Get your hands off the keyboard. You're on timeout. Five minutes. Don't touch the keyboard. Five minutes. And put your fucking phone away, okay? Just sit here and watch. I don't know if NL knew this. A lot of people live in Pakistan. I don't know if you knew this. You're fucking annoying as shit. Shut up. Ridiculous. Now stop derailing the stream. You're lucky with all the cots in chat. Otherwise, I'd be scrolling up and taking a peek at your username and then auditing your whole fucking... Let me guess, you were very active during the McDonald's stream. I'll, I, you, I could still scroll up. It's still in the cache. You better be careful. That's all I'm saying. There's a C here.
And I'm going to guess they won't let you just take a boat. So we have to go Iraq. The United Arab Emirates is like either here or here. Saudi Arabia is freaking huge. Let's drop a Saudi Arabia on you. Oh! Thanks for the free power up. I am God's chosen child. We got the geography quiz done with only one inaccuracy. <laughs> it's a small detour through China. When NL calls Singapore a small country, even though 50 million people live there. Oh my God. Just for that, guess what? You're eating some puck doku. Two cup wins with different franchises. Okay, okay, okay. Pat Maroon. No hockey player has ever looked more like a kick streamer. <laughs> okay. 40 plus goals in a season with two plus cup wins with different franchises. No, no, this is, is not as hard as you would think. I hate to type it, bro. Mark Messier. Doesn't he look a little bit like Pruan 2 forever? Can't you picture this guy saying, A sex man! Film! Marc Messier was right about one thing. I can't just eat one. Detroit Red Wings, two plus cup wins with different franchises. Now, Marion Hossa famously lost with Pittsburgh, then went to Detroit, and then lost to Pittsburgh. But he also won with Chicago. But did he win with any other franchise? I don't think so. Detroit Red Wing that won two plus. Who were the Detroit Red Wings? Ah, 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 ah. Oh, is it pot? Yeah, I'm going to say Brett Hull won with the Stars and the Red Wings. Okay. Penguins, 40 goals in a season. Never moved anywhere else. Well, he moved all over the place, but we'll just go Yager on that one because I don't think he played for the Lightning or the Wings. Buffalo Sabres, 40 goals in a season. Maybe you've heard of him. Alexander Mogilny. Now, this is where things get tough. Detroit, Pittsburgh. There's only one answer. Marion Hossa. But I was going to type Larry Murphy. Yo, I always thought that Marion Hossa looks a lot like uh, Josh if he was Slovakian. He's got Josh's face, but like, like blonde red hair. Like he looks, I, you're like, I, I can't see it. Well, guess what, motherfucker? I've seen Josh in person like 150 times. He looks a lot like Marion Hosa, okay? That's mean to Josh? Well, he's a handsome guy, bro. He's a professional athlete. And this one, this one I simply don't know. And I feel like this one I simply don't know. I feel like I'm going to give up and save you from the rest of Pugdoku. Bogosian? Oh, Dominic Hasek, bro. That's a gimme. I'm not sweating Bogosian. Hasek, I'm sweating. That should have been very easy. Andrew Chuck also should have been easy. And Chris Kunitz. I forgot that he went to, uh, to Tampa. Waited for so long for a lightning puck doku? Just for you to screw me? Brother, you have like eight Stanley Cups. Your team has only been 
in the league since I was like nine years old. Just relax, okay? Just for that, you're getting movie grid. Yeah, but they have to live in Florida. Bro, relax. They're a Tampa Bay Lightning fan. They probably don't live in Florida. They probably live in Etobicoke. Tom Hanks, Julia Roberts, John Travolta. Okay, easy. One word title for John Travolta. Michael! Easily one of the worst movie posters I've ever seen in my life. Nominated for an acting Oscar. I have no idea what John Travolta has ever done that has gotten him nominated for an acting Oscar. But I definitely know... Speed Kills did not make $100 million at the box office. What crushed at the box office? $100 million plus? I mean, I'll go, I'll go Saturday Night Fever for that. He might have been nominated for an acting Oscar for that, for all I know. But... Probably not. I feel like this is the kind of film the Academy would not respect. John Travolta. I'm just saying it. Like, he's never really been like that. Like, he's been famous, but he's never really been respected on the same level as, like, uh, even a Tom Cruise or, a, you know, obviously a Tom Hanks. So I, I don't know. I don't know. He's got a couple slappers. We'll let it marinate for a minute. Tom Hanks nominated for an acting Oscar. Won't you be my neighbor? Never mind. I mean, Captain Phillips. Never mind. I mean, cast away. There we go. Well, we're cooked today. Uh, one word title. From Tom Hanks. You ever hear of a little movie called um, Big? You ever hear of a little movie called Sully? Bro, spoilers! $100 million plus run at the box office. You ever hear of a little film called Toy Story 2? Julia Roberts, nominated for an acting Oscar, Aaron Brockovich. Fucking whatever, okay? Julia Roberts, we only have one guest left anyway. One word title is a given. We don't even have to bet on the box office, but we could. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go crazy on this. I'm going to say Julie and Julia. I bet, him, I bet it crushed at the box office. An ampersand. You got to work on your search algorithm, bro. Okay, it did not go crazy at the box office. That's not her. That's Meryl Streep. You're thinking of Eat, Pray, Love. Oh, <laughs> Pulp Fiction, of course. The hell is wonder, bro? Netflix ass movie poster. Yeah, the movie sucked, but it had a good message. Four stars. Fuck you, Julia Rob. I don't know. It might be good. It is a Netflix movie. You can smell it off the screen. No disrespect. Hang on. I'm verifying that I'm not a robot. Select all images with motorcycles. Yeah, guys. Hang on, let me expand this. I'm not a robot. Yeah, guys, there's motorcycles. And there's a lot of other stuff, too. This, I mean, though, that looks like a, a scooter parked on the side of the road, is my two cents. They let us in. Okay, we must... You ever think that you definitely didn't get the CAPTCHA right? But they were like, you did as good as you could. So we let you in. There's no way I have a 100% efficacy rate at the CAPTCHA. Shoe. A interjection meaning 
used especially in driving away an unwanted they animal. They tried to trick us. It's S-H-O-O. Skoe is a Middle English Skoe. term that evolved into the modern English word show. Shoe. Cleave a verb meaning to adhere firmly and closely or loyally Cleave. and unwaveringly. Clevian in Middle English originated from the Old English term cliffian. Cleave a verb meaning to adhere firmly and closely or loyally and unwaveringly. Clevian in Middle English originated from the that Old English term That doesn't sound like the definition of the word cleave. Cleave a verb meaning to adhere firmly. Okay, whatever. Teaspoon. A noun meaning a small spoon that is... So true. Possibly used for tea. Scrapple. A, a Pennsylvania mixture yeah, okay. of ground meat such as pork. That's what Gene Hackman was eating in, in that diner's drive-ins and, and dives and uh, episode. Actually, he, actually, and now he says he never tr he never tried the scrapple. That's true. Finish a verb meaning to come to an end. Term. Okay, easy. We got this. Fracas, a noun meaning a noisy. Extensive, come the adjective on. meaning extensive. That's like a second grade word, bro. Visibility, a noun meaning the quality or. St don't make me laugh. Cladistics. A noun meaning a system of biological taxonomy yes, that about, defines taxa from the Latin word clade, meaning you're a dork. Not found in ancestral groups and uses inferred evolutionary relationships to arrange taxa in a branching hierarchy of course, such that all point. members of a given taxon have the same ancestors. Cladistics. Get owned. Birth. A noun meaning sufficient distance for. That's all I need to hear. Okay, we're on a we're on a heater right now. We're on a hot streak. We go again. I'm gonna drop my tactical nuke as soon as I hear a word we don't know. Jodpers. A noun meaning riding breeches cut full through the hips and close fitting from knee to ankle. Jodhpur is named after its founder, Rao Jodha, a Rajput chief in India in the 15th century. Yeah. Jodhpurs. A noun meaning riding breeches cut full through the hips and close fitting from knee to ankle. Jodhpur is named after its founder, Rao Jodha, a Rajput chief in India in the 15th century. Jodhpurs. A noun meaning riding breeches cut full through the hips and close fitting from knee to ankle. Jodhpur is named after its founder, Rao Jodha, a Rajput chief in India in the 15th Fuck! <laughs> no, 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 no! Pompeii. A geographical name meaning you, ancient Chibli. city and. Thank you, Chibli, for that one. Macaque. A noun meaning Thank any you, of the genus. Thank you, Super Auto Pets, Macaca, for that one. Of chiefly Asian monkeys, typically having a sturdy build and including some short tailed or tailless forms, especially rhesus monkey. Macaque. Hauteur. A noun meaning arrogance, haughtiness. This word originates from the French term haute, meaning high. Hauteur. A noun meaning arrogance, haughtiness. This word originates from the French term <laughs> haut, meaning high. Hauteur. Mm. A noun meaning haute, arrogance, haute, haute, haughtiness. Like haute cuisine. This word originates from the hauteur. French term haut, meaning high. Hauteur. Yes! It was double French. It was French in the front and French in the back. Like a Renault. Fortissimo. Oh. An adverb or adjective meaning very loud. Fort Used especially as a direction in music. Fort Fortissimo is derived from the Italian language. Oh, it's one T. <laughs> it's one. T I should have gone with my instincts. Jod purrs. Jod. Oh, we were off by a variety of different ways there. Okay, fair enough. Pretty good, though. Pretty good. All right, that's the dulls for today. Or maybe we should run one more back, maybe. Play, play again. Practice on hard. Five lives remain. Ready? This is a good one. Not F11, please. That's my full screen hotkey. Vulcan, a noun meaning the Roman god of fire and metalworking. Volcanus stems from Latin, named after Vulcan, the god of fire and metalworking. Vulcan, a noun meaning the Roman god of fire and metalworking. Volcanus stems from Latin, named after Vulcan, the god of fire and metalworking. Vulc. Yes! Judaism. A noun mean. That's a given. Guanina. A noun meaning a purine base, C5H5N50, that codes genetic information in the polynucleotide chain of DNA or RNA. 
Guano is from Quechua Wanu, yes, combined with suffix dung. ain, used in chemical terminology. Guanina, a noun it's meaning not a guanina, base, okay? C5H5 it's guanine, but N5O. that's fine. Vicissitudes, a noun meaning the quality or state of being changeable. Mutability. Derived from Latin vicissitudo, the term evolved through Middle vicissitudes? French. Vicissitudes? Vicissitudes. A noun meaning the quality or state of being changeable. Mutability. Derived from Latin vicissitudo, Vis the term evolved through Middle French. Vicissitudes. Vicissitudes. A noun meaning the quality or state of being changeable. This is changeable. huge, guys. This Mutability. is huge. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Peroxide. A noun meaning a okay, compound. Okay, now that you, you mess up vicissitudes, they're like, here's something that's more your speed. Oxygen is visualized as joined to oxygen. Supercilious, a adjective meaning coolly and patronizingly haughty. I, that was wrong. Supercilious was wrong. I thought that was perfect. Oxyacetylene, a adjective meaning of relating to or utilizing a mixture of oxygen and acetylene. He's crazy. Oxyacetylene. Balbrigan. A noun meaning a knitted cotton fabric used especially for underwear or hosiery. Balbriggan is an Irish origin word, named after a town in Ireland. Balbriggan. Yes! Adversity. A noun okay, that's meaning a, given. a state. That's not even an SAT word. Graticule. A noun meaning reticle. It can't this be word anything originates else. from the Latin criticula, meaning fine latticework, derived from cratus for wickerwork. Graticule. It sounds like something Dan radical. would call a This word a scope originates from the Latin PUBG. criticula, meaning fine latticework, derived from cratus for wickerwork. <laughs> Graticule, a noun meaning reticle. Me listening this word to originates a JPEG from Mafia the Latin song? criticula, meaning fine latticework, derived from cratus for wickerwork. Oh, yeah, derived from Graticule, cratus for wickerwork. A noun meaning reticle. Me listening to Lucini this word by Camp Lowe. originates from the Latin criticula, Three meaning fine latticework. Three shots of life for all night, you dig it. Derived from cratus for latticework. A noun meaning reticle. Ooh, okay, we got it. There's not. It can't be spelled like anything else. Stirrups. Okay. A noun stirrups. meaning either of a pair of small. Excruciating. An adjective meaning causing great pain or anguish. Oeuvre. A noun meaning a substantial oeuvre. body of work. Constitute. See that one? I that was nuts on the table because I use oeuvre all the time. O e u v r e. Oeuvre. Avocations. A noun meaning a subordinate occupation. You can't stop me. Danseur, a noun meaning a male ballet dancer. Dancer is derived from the French word. Yes, I know. Entomophagy, a noun meaning the practice of eating insects. Entomophagy, a noun meaning the practice of eating insects. He's, I'm, I'm going the fuck off. Send me, where do they do the Scripps National Spelling Bee? Send me to the Scripps National Spelling Bee, bro. Surgeon, a noun meaning a medical specialist. Who Come on, surgeon? Schokrut, a noun meaning sauerkraut. This word is a modification of the German word sauerkraut, adapted by the French. Schokrut. You can't stop throwing some Swahili at me. You can't stop me right now. Schokrut. A hypertrophy. A this noun a meaning excessive development of an organ or part. Specifically, increase in bulk, as by thickening of muscle fibers, without multiplication of parts. <laughs> Hypertrophy originates from Papesian, a biographical name meaning Samuel 1633, 1703 English diarist. Papesian, a biographical name meaning Samuel 1633, 1703 English diarist. Papesian, a biographical name meaning Samuel 1633, 1703 <laughs> English diarist. Papesian, a biographical name meaning Samuel 1633, 1703 English diarist. Papesian, I think it's an a, a biographical name meaning Samuel 1633, 1703. No. Who is this girl talking to my husband? Kate, she's whispering sweet nothings into my ear. You ready for this one? Sacristy. A noun meaning a room in a church where sacred vessels and vestments are kept and where the clergy vests. Sacristy comes from Middle English. It, it couldn't have been anything else. It couldn't have been anything else but S-A-C-R-O-S-T-Y. Boudin. A noun meaning blood sausage. Sausage originates from French, adopted into Louisiana French with the same spelling.
boudin, a noun meaning blood sausage. Sausage originates from French, adopted into Louisiana French with the same spelling, boudin, a noun meaning blood sausage. <laughs> really? Oh, we, dude, we can beat, you spelled 17 hard level words correctly. We can beat this. We can beat this. Not the daily. We already did the daily. It's so beatable. Guarantor. A noun meaning one that give oeuvre. Yes! A, a substantial. They stopped adding words to English. Heresy. A noun meaning adherence to a religion. Mien. A noun meaning air or bearing especially as expressive of attitude or personality. Demeanor. The word is derived from shortening and alteration of its original form. Mien. A noun meaning air or bearing especially as expressive <laughs> of attitude or personality. Okay, it is, that's mien right there. Sedulous. A adjective meaning involving or accomplished with careful perseverance. Sedulous comes from Latin meaning sincere or diligent, from sea without and dolus, guile, sedulous. A adjective meaning involving or accomplished with careful perseverance. Sedulous comes from Latin, meaning sincere or diligent, from sea without and dolus, guile, sedulous. A adjective meaning no involving G. or no accomplished G. with sedulous. careful perseverance. Sedulous comes from... Yes! Exile, okay, a noun meaning bantlings. A noun meaning a very young child, derived from German bankling meaning bastard, which originates from <laughs> Old High German Bank, bantlings. A noun meaning a very young child, derived from German bankling meaning bastard, which originates from Old High German Bank, bantlings. B a noun meaning a very young child, derived from German bankling meaning bastard, which originates from Old High German Bank, bantlings. A noun meaning... It's bantlings, okay. Bantlings. Ninesuk, a noun meaning a soft, lightweight muslin. Ninesuk comes from Hindi and Urdu and directly translates to eyes delight. Ninesuk, a noun meaning a soft, lightweight muslin. Ninesuk comes from Hindi and Urdu and directly translates to eyes delight. Ninesuk, a noun meaning a soft, lightweight muslin. Ninesuk comes from Hindi and Urdu this one's and rough, directly guys. translates to eyes delight. Ninesuk, a noun meaning a soft, lightweight muslin. Ninesuk comes from Hindi and Urdu and directly translates to eyes delight. Ninesuk, a noun meaning a soft, lightweight muslin. Ninesuk comes from Hindi and Urdu and directly translates to... I don't know. I don't know that one. That one's tough. Marmalade. This a one noun is not. meaning a clear, sweetened jelly in which pieces of... Haitian. A noun meaning a native or inhabitant... Come on. Secant. A noun meaning a straight line. Some cutting fucking a curve part of a circle. Yeah, yeah, we all know. Don't don't debase us with your your juvenile words. Gauss, a noun meaning this. Something you d to your monitor. Cotswold, a noun meaning any of an English breed of large, long-wooled sheep. Cot. It's British. It can't be spelled any other way. Griffin, a noun meaning Brussels griffin. The word originates from French, where it literally translates to griffin. Griffin, a noun meaning Brussels griffin. The word what originates the from French, that where mean? it literally translates to griffin. Griffin, a noun meaning Brussels griffin. So there's like 20 the different ways to spell this. from French, where it literally translates to griffin. Griffin, a noun meaning Brussels griffin. The word originates from French, where it literally translates to griffin. Griffin, a noun meaning Brussels griffin. The word originates from French, where it literally translates to griffin. Motherfucker! <laughs> griffin. A word meaning Brussels griffin. Derived from the French, griffin, which means griffin. Thanks a lot. Thanks for your help. This one doesn't even have any, any sound. Okay. Versimilitude. That would have been the clip of the century. Versimilitude. Griffin. The site can't be reached. It's broken. Okay, cool. 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 The site broke. Job's gone. Brad, what are you going to do?